Hello, Hearts of Oak, and welcome to another interview coming up in a moment with David Atherton, who I followed for many years at Dave Atherton 20. And I think I started following him because of his uh, exposure of the grooming gangs and willing to stand shoulder to shoulder with Tommy for what he is doing. Anyone who does that is a brave individual and seeks truth more than position or fame. So I think that was why. We haven't met before, so first time we met on the interview, always good fun doing it that way. You never know how things will go. But we had a great conversation. Uh, we look into, obviously, some of the more recent cases of groups of who have been part of rape gangs going through the legal system and being prosecuted all historic but they're also more current but this is historic one that we looked at from 2000 to 2006 11 men jailed or 11 men about to be jailed being charged uh, only three of them with the first name Muhammad and we also look at the failure of the authorities to deal with this, turning a blind eye, council leaders, police, politicians, all turning a blind eye and basically not wanting a race war, a religious war. So we go into that and then we end up looking at immigration and how that is the part of the driver behind this, that clash that we have between Islam and the freedoms we have in the West and those from Islamic nations and that incompatibility that we are finding with the freedoms that we have had still have so i know you'll enjoy david's uh, expert thoughts on this as i have over the last few years and it's wonderful to have david atherton with us today david thank you so much for your time pleased to be here thanks thanks a lot for the invite not at all. I enjoyed following your Twitter feed that people can see there at David Atherton 20 uh, and they can follow that. And um, so I wanted you on for a while, but sometimes things take longer than expected. But thank you for coming on. Could I, before we get on to some of the, the topics uh, that you have been posting on, uh, could I ask you maybe just take a moment and introduce yourself to our viewers? Yeah, sure. No problems. I, I, I spent I spent most of my life uh, uh, in recruitment, um, so I'm, I'm, I've always had a real job, so to speak. And uh, funny enough, it was it was when the smoking ban came in in 2007 that I became polit quite politically active. I always had an opinion, but uh, but then I became politically active about trying to get it reversed or at least amended to a certain extent. And that took me into into into, into sort of writing about it. I got I got a lot of invites for for TV and radio to to, to defend smokers' rights. Last night when I was on, I was on Talk TV, we, that came up in conversation, and it's still one of the things one of the things I talk about. And from then on, you know, I I was asked by Raheem um, uh, Kassam, that's, 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 yeah, that's, yep. yeah, one and only Raheem <laughs> to write for the commentator. And then he took me with him to Breitbart, and, uh, and and here we are, here we are, day journalist and broadcaster. So um, yeah, I, can't, I can't forget Raheem's name. You, know, you, you picture him in the head there. So uh, that's my background, and um, one one of the things that I've you know, I, I think politicians think far too short term. You know, they want an instant fix, you know, uh, to the problem so they can get re-elected. And they completely fail to see, see, see the world ahead of them. You know, where will mass immigration take us into the future? You know, I'm not suggesting that all immigrants are bad. Certainly not. Probably the vast majority of perfectly decent people, you know, make a contribution to this country. But unfortunately, there are certain sectors of the community that don't. And this needs, this needs to be um, this needs to be pointed out. It needs to be discussed, but without, 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 without being called gammon racist bigger all the time. Yeah, that that does come up. So, um, well, let's. I think the focus probably um, and was our initial uh, focus whenever we launched, and then COVID tyranny all took over. Um, but was on the the culture clash that we see the clash with islam and our freedoms in the west sure. and the clash from other cultures that aren't yeah. suited to uh, a western lifestyle through all types yeah. of restrictions on freedom restrictions on women's position um yeah. uh, restrictions on right to choose yeah. and change religions yeah um all of that so that was certainly want to be our focus and uh, uh then we get thrown a, a COVID curveball yeah. um, and the focus. But one of your, maybe we'll start on one of the ones recently is this here. Uh, 11 men charged in Rochdale 
grooming investigation. And this is a story we see time and time again. And I always uh, interested that the BBC covered this, but they didn't cover it. It's not a proper story to them. It's a, oh, we'll put it in the Manchester section. So it's not on their men because they think... 11 sure. men getting arrested for rape, uh, basically more or less weekly, isn't an issue. Um, but this, well, this is this is yeah, between 2000 and 2006, yeah, uh, Greater Manchester. Um, th- this is obviously a story that you see regularly and you report on regularly and highlight. Yeah, sure. Uh, to tell us about this, right? Indeed, um, right. Well, obviously, we know the 30 years, uh, you know, you know, um, you know, Pakistani heritage rape gangs. No, they were either protected, uh, ignored, or covered up by 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 the establishment. And I mean, uh, the establishment I mean by the Labour Party, social services, and local count the local councils particularly actually uh, will, will cover things up. Um, I'll um, uh, yeah. So what I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll, um, I'll try and dig out a quote um, in, in the wake of the 2015 jailing of uh, 22 to um, uh, Pakistani heritage uh, rapists. Um, where, where, a lo- where a moderate imam commented that, that they actually, local imams actually encouraged the girls, uh, sorry, they encouraged the, the men in the congregation to go out and rape white white girls because they wore short sleeved shirts and mini skirts and things like that. No, they actually, it actually says they deserve to be treated like filth. You know, this, this was published in the Telegraph. You know, this was published in the Telegraph. And, um, but anyway, moving on from here, um, one of Greater Manchester Police, Rochdale's in the Greater Manchester Police area, and um, the Greater Manchester people were, were putting special measures, and Maggie Oliver fought valiantly to get these girls justice from the Greater Manchester Police. I think it. I, I think we have now turned a corner, um, in the sense that you, you know, you, you know, the, the councils won't won't be allowed to get away with this. They're, they're probably probably the main offenders because the Labour Party, ninety percent of Muslims vote, vote Labour. It's their core vote they don't want to lose. For example, Kim Ledbetter, the Batley and Spen MP, <laughs> you know, didn't spend her time talking about uh, the Batley grammar school teacher. Yeah. She talked. She, she was talking about Palestine in Parliament. You know, yeah. Yeah. you know what's that got to do? You know what's that got to do? You know because all her constituents are Muslims, and 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 they, and they are, by and large, most of them are anti-Semitic. Um, so I look upon this as, as a positive, positive thing that girls, uh, women now, obviously women now. are, are feeling bold and brave enough to go to go to the police, and uh, re- and, and report their their past rapes, and full full marks to the police are actually following through and arresting these people and investigating the cases. So I look upon that as being quite positive now, and um, I must say um, I, you know, the people we have to thank for that, you know, for, for keeping it in the public eye, are people like Tommy Robinson. I had no idea. I, I, re- I remember well. I think it was two thousand and seven. I think you know Nick Griffin is not my cup of tea. He really is a genuine, vile, nasty fascist. You know, no. you know, you know, but you know, when, when he was accused, when he was up in court, uh, he was accused of I think um, inciting racial hatred because he suggested uh, that uh, there were white girls being raped by Pakistani heritage men. And I thought, well, mate, you've really done it now, haven't you? You know, you deserve every single year you get for that, mate. Oh, but you're right. You know. <laughs> And again, it was Tommy Robinson. You know, you know, I, I thought well, I dismissed what he said at the time in 2006-7, where it was. But when when sort of Tommy Robinson um, formed, formed the EDL and he, and he brought it brought it to our attention, there's a there's a video of him um, from 2011 on BBC's Newsnight being interviewed by Jeremy Paxman, and he said the same thing again. I thought, Tommy, mate, you're going to be in trouble, you know. Um, and then we move on to. Um, yeah, they were on the 2013 when Nazir Afsal. And we got, 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 got to give the guys full credit. Yeah. Practicing Muslim, director of public prosecutions in the Northwest. He he uh, he uh, brought to trial the, 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 the Rochdale, the Rochdale uh, 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 rapists, and they were all jailed. And you know, I, I, you know, you, you've got to pay tribute to the guy. You've got to be fair here. You know, he was the person I think um, moved the move, move, move the you know, move the Titanic around or the ocean line around. Yeah. And uh, it, it, you know, it was not a figment of, of our imagination, and it moved on. And there was the Nexus J report of 2014. You know, really makes your hair curl. I'm, I'm surprised the government 
um, appointed advisor that was so blunt, yeah. uh, so blunt about what was going on there. And there's an article also, also read at the BBC that one of the, one of the local uh, uh, women who noted community leaders said that the whole of the whole of the whole of the uh, community knew what was going on in Rotherham, but they turned a blind eye. Mm. You know, the imams, the Muslim establishment, you know, sort of the local councillors knew exactly what was going on. They turned a blind eye. Yeah. We see that time and time. I will get on that in a bit. But sure. the um, two things pick up. One was, uh, I I love when you watch Tommy with someone who I mean, Tommy is very much like Nigel Farage, and that Nigel would be horrified to have in the same sentence. But sure. actually, they're individuals who are more might, and yet they are lovable characters. And you put Tommy with someone, and actually, he's such an infectious personality sure. that if. If you put someone who disagrees verbally, then on if if they give him ten minutes after yeah. that, they would actually see him quite differently because he is a, a warm, hospitable, sure. friendly person, and that and that goes sure. in, and he's not doing it out of hatred, but he's doing it out of concern for country. Sure, what well, do well? No, he 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 grew up. He he, 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 did, he grew up in Luton. No, he went went to school school with, 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 with other Pakistani heritage ch- children. Some were his mates, and some were nasty bullies and pieces of work. You know, who, who beat you up and nicked your wallet and, t- and took your lunch money. Yeah. You know, he, he saw. You know, he saw. You know, the, sort of some of the women who did did did, did marry uh, some of the some of the Asian men, and they lost contact with their family. You know, like they were for, forced to wear burqas and hijabs and what have you. He saw what cultural devastation that was happening, and it's all too difficult to mention publicly. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know. I think I think what the government is doing here is we, we talked about different cultures here. I think uh, I'll always like pointing pointing out on Twitter. You know, I always always like to ask the question: Why do you think Britain is is a relatively rich, rich country, and countries like Afghanistan and, and Pakistan and what have you are relatively poor countries? I can never answer the question. Um, the answer is um, we went through the Enlightenment in the, in the 17th century. Yeah whereby logic and facts and truth overrode superstition and religion, you know. And, uh, and it led us to free speech, free inquiry, and led to scientific and intellectual developments. And, uh, you know, we believe, we believe, you know, from 1215 Magna Carta, we believe in the rule of law. You know, the, you know, the, you know um, I've seen lots of, lots of uh, Asian men turn around and say, you know, that if, that, if, this, if this was reversed... Um, you know, if, if white men were, were, were raping Muslim girls, you know, they wouldn't bother going to the police. They'd go around mob banding and give the geezer a, a, a good, good spanking. Um, you know, but, but, you know, we, you know, we want the rule of law. You know, we want to go to the police. We expect the police to look into it for us and, and, and justice take, it, take, take its course. You know, and that's how you get a civilised society. You know, their culture seems to be based around mob rule. You know, who, who, who's, who's got the biggest baseball bat? Yeah, and and with those with those eleven men, uh, another aspect I'm um, intrigued to know your specific thoughts on this. But out of the eleven, uh, three of them were, of course, with a lovely name, Muhammad. Only three actually this time. But how? Because I I see it actually as probably even more of the religious influence uh, because of Islam historically spreading by the sword because sure. of Muhammad having sex slaves because sure. that was the norm. Um, so it very much been rooted in Islam, but also the added um, view of women in a Pakistani culture context. But that is predominantly from an Islamic heritage. Sure. So how do you put? Because again, I'm intrigued that um, that not who's the home said it wasn't not pretty Patel. Uh, Suella well, Brown, um, that she has talked about. Uh, Pakistani gangs, Pakistani individuals, but yet is still afraid to use the word Islam. And I think everything should be on the table to have a proper discussion. Well, indeed. Well, um, well, my, my, my analysis of the um, of the uh, uh, Pakistani Asian Muslim community is eighty percent decent, moderate people. They might be a little bit more conservative than us. Uh, they might not be, you know, pro LGBT. Um, 50, there was a survey done in 2016 where they found that 52% of uh, Muslims in this country would like to see um, homosexual acts made, made criminalised and people people jailed. 52%. 
Uh, but you know, eighty percent by and large, you know, you know, rub along moderate, decent. You no, know, yeah. some are actually quite liberal people. But, but what you got then? What you got from there on is the twenty percent, you know, extremist nutters or whatever, whatever you want to call them. And unfortunately, within the, from what I can see of the Islamic community, um, is the twenty percent tail wags the eighty percent moderate dog. Yeah. You know, and you know, I, I I was reading about a mosque in in Glasgow. There was a battle between the, the moderates and the extremists, and of course, the extremists won, and they won, and they won by going around and, and, and in physically intimidating people and beating them up and things like that. You know, and um, you know, you know, you know, you carry on your campaign. We're going to do your sort of attitude. So the pro- problem we have is, um, is this permeates throughout throughout the whole religion. Um, for example, uh, to, give, to, you know, to give you an example from the Bible, Leviticus says something along the lines of man shall not, man shall not lie down with, 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 with a woman as he does with a man. It's an abomination. Now, you know, sort of the Bible is full of quotations about justifying slavery, justifying, um, just, um, you know, killing, ki- killing gay people and what have you. We ignore it. You know, we, 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 live, we come from the Enlightenment and, you know, we believe what goes in the on, on in the home the privacy of your own home and club or whatever is your business, not the religions or the states. Now, with with the Quran, from what I can work out is, do, 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 do you know what I mean by uh, abrogated or, or unabrogated? Un- yep, yep. Well, okay. The later verses override the earlier verses. The violent verses override the peaceful, which is a real bummer for Muslims. Sure, <laughs> indeed. Yeah. <laughs> well, indeed. Yeah, and uh, you know, th- you know the you know. Um, from what, I, from what I can work out, the Quran in, in its current form will, will never be, uh, never be abrogated. Yeah. Uh, it, it will never, it will never be changed. It will not have new interpretations or, or or things ignored. It is the final word of God and has to be done to the letter. You know, to, down to the last full stop. You know, yeah. it can't be changed. And the Quran says that uh, our, us kafirs, us infidels, are second class citizens. Um, we, uh, it, it, it is quite, it is quite straightforward in saying that uh, you can do, you know, you can do what you like to people who are non-Muslims, yeah, because it's written written in our book, and that includes rape, slavery, and, and everything else. Until and until you convert to Islam, um, you have no choice but to pay uh, the best, pay extra taxes. Jizya, I think they call it, don't they? And um, so the, this is what we're up against. It's a fun, you know. The minority of fundamentalists who rule rule, rule the public space public space on Islamic uh, Islamic spaces, and you know, the government knows that. You know, did you did you see Robert Jenrick's um, Jenrick speech recently? Uh, comments? No, no. Oh, okay. The, the the immigration minister, he said the far right. Oh, blimey! I was, <laughs> the far right is is something we should not um, we should listen to. Some of the like, yeah, the far right. We, excuse me, paraphrasing here, uh, should be listened to, uh, and and not and and, and not uh, private or made made private or marginalised. No, he, he, you know, and and he actually said these people who have different cultures to us. No, he, he said he sounded like like Tommy Robinson on on, you know, on, on, on an average day. Right, it, it's amazing how terms are used and never defined, and that's sure. where the confusion. But actually, what just uh, another spot? Um, the of course the if we had an issue with Orthodox Jews running around killing and raping on the basis of Leviticus or something, then yeah. that would be an issue. But that you're right, that doesn't happen. Sure. It is a problem with Islam and the. Uh, the understanding the basis sure. does seem to be historically in, in Islam. But but th- this is another, and um, this is an issue, I think, the f- my frustration and anger is against the Muslim Pakistani community, but also is against the English system. Um, and here, your story, Rohan Adil, when age 15, filled himself raping a schoolboy, shared photos of paedophiles online, and the police found hundreds of pictures. Um, and he got sentenced to 28 months detention in a young offender's institution, uh, of which he will serve half, because that's what happens to those who rape children. Mm. Uh, so he will serve just over a year. And I'm amazed that the English legal system thinks that raping children is punishable by a one-year sentence. That's where I think we've got, because if the sentences were 
huge. If people were locked away for life, then actually that would be a deterrent. A year isn't really a deterrent, is it? No, it's not. No, um, someone someone like that should be in jail for his. Uh, he probably take his age as mitigation. I would have given him five, six years, personally speaking. If 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 he, if he was eighteen at the time, I would have given him ten, fifteen years. Uh, if if I if I if I've been the judge, and and also as well, you know, I, I really maybe maybe I'll also do, also do uh, some research, maybe some research here as well, but. Um, I always get the impression white people get 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 treated more harshly than than, than, than the than the Asian people. Um, okay. I just get this impression, you know, you know, you know, when you have abused multiple times, uh, you know, a thirteen year old girl, you know, maybe literally hundreds of times. There was a, there was a one there was a, there was a one that about in, in the Great Mansion speech. I've forgotten her name now, but she had one hundred and seventy seven Asian names. Pakistan, I say Asian, it's interchangeable with Pakistani heritage. Mm. And she had 177 names on her, on her phone. And she went to the police. You know, her mother went to the police to report it. Yeah. And they did absolutely nothing. You know, yeah. absolutely nothing. You know, when you're being gang raped by 177 people, or possibly up to 177 people, uh, and you're 13 years of age, that is 20 years in prison, mm. at least. And, you know, and you know, if you're coming out in 10 years, I'll, I'll probably give you 30 years for that as well. Um, you know... I, I, don't, I don't know whether, whether the judge is, is being culturally sensitive or whether they think the girls were, to a certain extent, culpable for their own behaviour. I don't know. Um, but um, no, it's, 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 it's just completely unacceptable. And also, one thing, I'm, one thing I noticed as well, a lot of them get, get let out a lot earlier as well. Yeah. There's one guy who was given 20... It was, it was a gang rape leader who was given 20 years... He was let out after five. Yeah, you know, I, I just don't. I just don't know how this is going on. And I'll tell you what, you know, a lot of, when they do come out of jail, they still don't think they've done anything wrong. Some of them, anyway. Maybe a majority still think they haven't done anything wrong. Well, th- th- that's this. So I wonder actually, and I'm I'm not someone who's for capital punishment. I believe that life is sanctified. So um, I set that aside. But I do think that actually. Jail has to be a deterrent, but it has to be rehabilitation. And if someone has not been rehabilitated, then I don't see how they can be let back in society. So I actually think if you cannot, if you do not know whether someone will actually not carry out raping children once again, then I yeah. think they can be released. And that yeah. means they need to be held until um, it can be said that actually they're no longer a danger to society. Or they'll go through physical or chemical castration. Yep, yep, yep. I think that has to be looked at and had a conversation with the British public because it's to let someone. I mean, we've um, what the, the legal case have been involved in with Liz. I mean, her perpetrator rapist was was in the open prison after something like three years, um, ready to be released. An open prison where you're free to come and go, and the individual is raping children. It doesn't connect at that, all. That, that, certainly... is not, that is not a punishment. No, that is not a punishment. You know, uh, you, know you, you know, for example, you know. Date rape, for example, you know, you know, you know, assume there's sort of two Europeans, you know, involved in date rape. You know, he said, she said, sort of that type of thing. Both both get five, six years for that. You know, that's that's two adults. You know, and you know, there must be some. some, some I, I don't want to, you know, be a rape apologist or whatever and minimize and minimize the crime. But you know, there, you know, there's obviously some degree of of cooperation. So that we obviously went back to somebody's place. And you know, of course, of course, the geezer deserves five, six years. But you know, when you're doing that, you know, uh, you know, you're, you're feeding a 12, 13 year old alcohol and drugs, and yeah. you, all your mates are coming around and you know, in some dirty little flat above, above a kebab shop. Hmm. You know, that's got to be that's, that's, that's far worse, worse crime. You know. Yeah, yeah. Let I, I want a, a, another video you'd reposted was about Oldham. Uh, council leader, oh, um, and, and yeah. so let's let's play this lovely individual. Um, I've just had local elections, but I uh, really, if you're a UK viewer, you you get what you put in, and if you don't go and vote, don't engage, yeah. um, then actually, you get individuals like this who are happy for children to be raped. But let's just play sure. this 30 second clip. Let me play it. Oh, bless Emily. I know. Let me play her. 
publication of that report two weeks ago, I spoke to a number of victims and um, they came forward and ran me that week. The victims that were referenced in the report, but also other victims of CSE in Oldham. And speaking to those people um, and how it has affected their lives, and they were, you can't say it's destroyed their lives, because the people I spoke to, it hasn't, but it has had an impact into adulthood. Oh, well, um, that's right, apologist. It hasn't. It hasn't destroyed their. I and I, the thing I can't get round is um, if you are men and women. Well, obviously, we're built differently. We'll not even get into the gender conversation. But I thought, as a woman, that she, when she saw the stories, when she met with these girls, that um, that she would be horrified because, and yet, she seemed to say. Being raped as a child does not destroy your life. Um, where do you go with that? Whenever that's what our politicians believe, you know, it's an overused cliche, mic drop time, you know. But I'm sorry, that's that is just so offensive and revolting and disgusting. No, you know, you know, it literally renders me speechless on on this one. You just. You know, what the hell are you saying, darling? You know, you know, no, to my mind, you know, if I was Keir Starmer, I'd, I'd suspend her for that. Yeah. No, no, and, and, and make her come out with a full apology. In fact, I've got an idea for, for, for a letter. Thank you very much for that one, Peter. Um, you know, you cannot say that. I believe she has slightly retracted that. I, one, of, one of her fiercest cricket critics um, on Twitter, Raja, sure I think his name is, um, she has backtracked on that to a certain extent. But, you know, really, she should be banished for, 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 you know, for, from polite society for the rest of her career for that. No, she, 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 is, is, she should not be holding any positions of power or authority. She should retire. She should be suspended. She should be fired and dis dis disappear into the distance and never heard of again. Yeah, if if only I think probably Sir Keir Stammer will get down on his knee instead to the to the rapist, and um, that's what his response sure. seems to be to crime. Yeah, um, there a po This was interesting. You'd put uh, this post up, and it's looking at the crime index for uh, cities in Europe, sure. and you said, "Does anyone see a correlation now?" I I do see a a correlation, and actually number twenty doesn't come in there, which is number twenty is Brussels, uh, which is of course thirty is it thirty percent or thirty five percent Islamic. Um, yeah. I think that, and then we've got the beautiful city of Bradford there in the UK at the top, and all in between. Um, but to me, actually, it connects the dots of mass immigration, changing cities, and also yeah. very high Islamic populations. Yeah. And our politicians are wondering why has crime gone up? Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, I've, I've, we're, we're, back, we're back, back to cultural differences here, whereby we, 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 uh, one of the reasons I believe Europe has and America has, has advanced so much is we've learned to cooperate at an unfamily level. Um, you know, the reason, you know, the Middle East and and um, and, and parts of Asia, um, that the reason they employ their family because they're the only people they can trust. Yeah. You know, and you know, I'm, I'm sure we, I'm sure we all, all nick pens and elastic bands from work. You know, but you know, but we'd never think of defrauding the company of, of uh, you know of substantial amount of money. You know, um, you know, and we want you know most most employers in this employer employees in this country want to do the best for their comp com company because they get a pay rise and things like that. You know, we 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 we've amongst ourselves uh, at a business level and it's, 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 to a certain extent at a political level as well have learned to engage with each other and trust trust each other. You know, it's, it's it's one of the one, one of the reasons why um, in Scandinavia, in Scandinavia that. Um, uh, that, uh, the, that the government spends so much of their money because the people actually trust their government and, and, and the civil servants to spend their money properly. Um, but you know, we, we've learned cooperation. You know, that's the reason why you know, places, places like Somalia and Afghanistan and Pakistan and places like that, they're always fighting each other. It's clan warfare. You know, they haven't learned to cooperate as a, as a society. Um, where uh, obviously this is a conversation that um, politicians don't want to have, and you see kind of 
snippets of it, certainly with the grooming gangs, uh, yeah. with the rib gangs, you see Pippers putting it out. Uh, as a star member, the, the Daily Mirror thing did a, a massive like 18 month investigation in Telford. They put out a story, and it seems to be more entertainment than actually solving an issue. It's simply they get an exclusive story. They are happy to talk about rip on their front page and a couple of pages inside. It maybe does it for a day or two, and then it moves on to whatever, uh, coronation or the weather or something else. Um, and I'm wondering, I mean, are you more positive that actually uh, we will address this as a society? Because these cases, they're still happening more or less every other week. Um I believe we are we are actually in the present tense we are addressing it to a certain extent. Uh, I, I, had a, I had a guy from LBC, uh, you know, LBC in touch with me a couple of weeks ago, and he wanted to do a piece on grooming gangs, and uh, I put me in touch with a couple of people, and, and he did a five minute segment for the for the Nick Ferrari show. So I was, I was able to point him in the right direction. Um, you mentioned the Daily Mirror there, um, and the BBC are covering to a certain extent. Um, I think they have no choice. Um, I, I, this, is, this is where social media, uh, particularly Twitter and Facebook, have done such a good job it, and get her that you, you can actually go out there and, and, and report on it and let, and let people know. Um, and uh, so I, I look, at, look, look, upon, look upon that as, as, as a positive sign here. But the thing about the BBC and, and what I noticed about the LBC report and probably and the, or with Sky as well, Sky, Sky and um, Sky as well, you know, they, they talk and, about and, and GB News have touched on as well. Oh, um, G- I know GB Charlie Peters quite, has. GB News is quite different. I'll leave GB News to one side if I can. Yeah. But if you look at the Sky Sky News articles and the LBC article and Daily Mirror article, they don't they they talk about grooming gangs, but they don't talk about the ethnicity. You notice that mm. they don't say, oh well, you know, well they seem they seem to be disproportionately you know Asian or whatever. They yeah. don't mention it. They, they just go to the story of, of how they how they were raped and what have you. Um, GB News is quite is quite and and talk TV to a certain extent are really quite different. You know, I you know I, <laughs> when I was on talk TV last night, I I, I mentioned I sort of came, came, I, I got, got into broadcasting from from defending smokers' rights. We had somebody from Ash Action on Smoking Health on last night, and it was the first time she's had three people <laughs> who, who who were who were who were uh, against her and and and, and, th- and, and disagreed with her. You get, you get on the BBC and ITV like I've done. You, you know, even the cameraman hates you. You know, you know for, 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 for the smoke of rights. You know, <laughs> and this is you know I I, for, I I've been in touch with Charlie on a couple of matters, and I get the impression he's a genuine guy who yeah. wants wants to do good, and um, and it, it's really the fact he he will go out and call spades uh, uh, spade shovels and things like that, and tell it how it is. Um, I think he's, he's greatly to GB News's credit, and uh, you know, and, and and to him personally, you know, and talk TV. I, you listen to some of the phone-ins, um, some of the phone-ins on uh, on on talk TV, and some you know, they know that if you if you want the screen to light up with phone calls, we're going to talk about immigration today. You know, you know, it's I mean, what you what you have. I don't know if you've seen it, but um, talk TV they got they got these this screen, and there's a room yeah. for room for about hundred hundred phone calls. I think it's something like that. And when there's somebody waiting to come on or, or, or they're hold, on hold, you know, it lights up. And, and I was supposed to learn immigration, the whole screen you know, goes <laughs> wide, you know. And I can't believe, you know, I, I, you know, uh, you know, some of the language that some of the callers use that go unchallenged, I, I'm really, really quite impressed, actually. You know, that, you know we, we've been invaded, they're changing our culture, they don't fit in, you know. You know, I don't think don't think their religion is, is uh, you know is is what we're looking for in this country. I can't believe how much free speech is allowed these days. I think that has changed that narrative as well. And where I think these people got their ideas was was from social media. You know, for example, I, I was I was chatting with the producer last night and presenter of Talk TV. He said, actually uh, said, well, I've never heard of Dave Allison. How come he's got fifty eight thousand followers? <laughs> you know, he's you know, he's not a celebrity. Well, which is true. You know, which is true. It's true, isn't it? I got it simply because I covered I've, I've covered yeah. immigration on Twitter. And that's the reason yeah. I got so so many followers. And uh, you know, and I've been nobbled by Twitter. Um, yeah, I I posted a um, posted a, a halal sl- uh, slaughter. I put a sensitive marker over it. You know, I didn't go out as it was. 
so some lefty reported me, and now I've been I'm completely knob. Like, my my, my uh, impressions are down eighty percent now. I'm trying to get that reversed. Uh, but I've tried and I tried. Anyway, that's by the by. Now, I probably if I have been knob, would I probably have seventy eighty thousand followers by now? Hmm. I can just yeah, main, yeah. I can just about maintain it fifty eight thousand. But that, 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 no, the, you know, but the point is, I'm, the point I'm making here is, I think social media and particularly Twitter w- w- was was crucial in getting the message out, and you know that people could see for themselves what was going on. No, completely, and and you have those numbers because people want news and they find yeah. you're putting it out. So yeah, um, where else do they go? Um, I want to end on uh, one or two of the immigration stories, but when you talk about people phoning in and being angry at what immigration has done and the change and this is one of them this is yas muhammad uh very good and in, in what she does and this is a a video of her i, I think it's her talking about forced wedding when she was at her forced wedding she was so dissociated sure. um she uh, didn't really know what was happening and crying and talk about the trauma that millions of women and then uh, emily talks here about the bbc touching on i think the bbc do it for entertainment but anyway sure. um that the forced marriage unit now is over a thousand cases a year um, and i would actually love the uh the government to actually go and and focus where this is because i remember just one i remember my older son uh, in his class they had a special class none of the parents were told and it was about fgm uh so i've got my child uh, my boy being told about F. What has that got to do with him? Absolutely zero. One, it should be the girls, and two, it should be the girls from Islamic backgrounds um, yeah. or Asian backgrounds where it happens, like Somalia, where it's, what, 90% or whatever. Yeah. But the uh, it seems as though our government is wasting resources because they're so scared to be called racist or Islamophobic. Well, they, they, could, have, they could have stopped, they could have stopped um, FGM in one fell swoop, swoop by prosecuting both parents and yep. sending them to jail, sending them to jail. Yep. You know, it, you know, it's a case of you know, you, you know, you, you can't make an omelet without, without cracking some eggs. You know, I'm sorry if there's got to be five or six parents who have got to go to jail for, for allowing, allowing their daughter to, to be FGM'd. Um, so be it. Uh, if they've got to go to care while they're in jail, so be it. Because that was that that was stop at one fell swoop. You know, FGM in this country. And another thing we need to do is we've got to stop chain migration. You know, you know, get get the get you know get the mother-in-law in as well, that kind of thing. Yeah. And also, I think we we, we should. Um, it was Syed, Sa- uh, the table show Times journalist, um, Matthew Syed. Uh, Matthew Syed, yeah, yeah, Matthew Syed. Uh, he uh, he's of Pakistani heritage. And he suggested that cousin cousin marriages should be made illegal, and uh, and you have to stop, you know, uh, arranged marriages from Pakistan. That has to stop. And you um, wonder why it's not legal already. That's the scary yeah, thing. Yeah, no, I, th- I think you know. I, th- I think uh, when it comes to genetic, birth, you know, bad genetic births, uh, genetic de- deformities from birth, thirty-eight percent come from come, from, come yeah. from the Pakistani heritage community. It yeah. should be stopped. And, and I'm sorry, you know, arranged marriages are now finished. You can't have any more. You know, and uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure um, this needs to be fact checked. I st- but I still think even in arranged marriages that there are basic requirements for the English wang- language. If there are not, you can't speak English. You can't have can't have a, a conversation in English. You're not allowed to come into this country. You know, um, basically, you know, I, I think something like fifty nine percent of marriages in Bradford are with are, 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 are with cousins, mm-hmm. and it's basically to keep the wealth into the family. That's the reason they do it. Um, and, and actually, one other one of the um, one of the Islamic sects, Tablighi Jamaat, eighty million, I think, out of uh, New Delhi. Yeah. And actually, in uh, in those marriages, actually, the woman does not even attend her own wedding because she's a woman. So her father attends the wedding on her behalf. She has zero rights, and sure. that is the same in the UK. If you're Tablighi up in Dewsbury, <clears throat> um, sure. that's Tablighi Jamaat, and the government could stop that in an instant. Sure, I know. Um, but you, but you, um, you, you know what will happen, won't you? You know, if you know if, if we clamp down in any shape or form, they know they will be out on the streets. You know, vandalizing stuff and yeah. being violent. They're going to have to send the riot police in, possibly even the army. Um, and the, no Home Secretary wants wants to do that. 
so they appease them. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you saw the, the Wakefield 14-year-old boy who scuffed mm. at Quran. Yep. And, um, and uh, you know, and... Uh, oh, by the way, um, uh, the people from the mosque went, 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 locked on her door and threatened her. Wow. You know, and... <laughs> You know, and, they, and obviously the boy, the autistic boy had death threats. Yeah. And she thought the only way to get out of this is go to the mosque, put, put a silly veil lot over her head and, you know, and prostrate herself. I mean, did you see the audience? It no, was, no, I missed that. I didn't see, no. No, you see the audience. Um, it was packed to the rafters. Wow. Of, of middle, middle-aged and, and elderly Asian men sitting, sitting cross-legged on the floor. Talk, talk about the intimidating, intimidating right. environment. Right. You know, and she had to grovel and apologize and things like that. And the thing that really, really stuck in, stuck, you know, stuck in my craw was the chief inspector for the West, West Yorkshire Police there condoning everything that had happened. You know, because yeah. he, know, he knows if, if, if he'd gone after the people who threatened the autistic boy, yeah. you know, the whole of the community will be after him. Whole of the other community will be after West Yorkshire, Yorkshire Police. You know, this is violence and intimidation. You know, which 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 one day we will pay the price. You know, we've got two ways to two ways of going here. We're going to have to go through go through a period of, of civil unrest, or we're, we're all going to, all going to have, to, have to bend the knee to Sharia law. There is no middle ground here. You know, there's no compromise. You know, there's no compromise. I, I, there's a guy. Um, his surname's Salah. Sally. S A L I H. And he heads up the Five Pillars Fundamentalist uh, media site. And, uh, you know, people on Twitter were saying, you know, oh, isn't it wonderful uh, the, the, you know, that these Muslims and Muslims are going into in Christian churches and preaching and things like that? And someone, someone asked him, well, can you ever see a Christian pl- a priest, a vicar or priest uh, being allowed to um, go to a mosque? <laughs> and he, he, he put one word, never. You know. It's always one way. It's, it's always it's always it's, one you way. Know, you know, um, but no, you're uh, just one. I I think on the FGM, and then we'll finish on immigration. But the FGM, I actually think that um, it's not just actually the children should be in care for a while while the parents are in jail. Actually, the children should be taken away. It is better for the children not to be cut up with knives and blades. So whatever the alternative is, is better than child abuse sure. so i i don't i think they should be completely removed and if that means thousands of children removed from families uh but you're right it will be riots religious race riots everything will get burned down they'll yeah. accuse the home secretary of of uh don't know folding the page of a crown and therefore they can kill her it, it's we see what happens across the world so yeah well absolutely so uh no, I, uh, you know, it's, this, this is the thing. This is, this is one of the reasons the government is so is so so pathetic and weak is they fear the reper- re- of civil unrest repercussions. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's end up on uh, immigration. There are a load of different stories, but this uh, I thought this was Noah's Ark, but no, it's not Noah's Ark. It's the immigrant ark. Barge to house five hundred male migrants off Dorset coast says government, and this was this was last month, but it gives you an idea of what we're facing because when the government said they were going to house migrants on boats i thought they were just taking the mick but no uh, this thing has come on they'll need a they'll need maybe a hundred of these but 500 male migrants will be housed in this barge poor people in in dorset that will see this and it's coming in the coming months um and uh, the vessel, which is currently in Italy, <laughs> so to bring from Italy, there must be only one vessel in the world that can hide <laughs> But it will be significantly cheaper than hotels. Um, it, it's uh, obviously if we need to bring boats from Italy to put people in who are legally coming in the country, we have a problem. And yet the government don't seem to want to address the problem. They're just going to get barges. And I guess sure. we'll have hundreds of these off the coast. Sure. Well, it's, it's sticking plasters rather than cures, isn't it? You know, and um, un- until, un- well, the solution, the long-term solution for this is, you know, long- long-term solution for this is, um, we might have, we, we, we need, need to go to a maybe an American style of public administration, whereby the top civil servants are reported uh, are, are, are appointed by the government. That doesn't seem to work that badly, in, in, in a sense. Um, Suella Braverman um, was um, what, what happened was um, six migrants has had enough of Britain 
and they got back on the ferry to go back to France. <laughs> and they were dragged, dragged back by the police and brought back to Britain. Because the, the, the permanent secretary, yeah, but the, this is the reason why. The permanent secretary, Matthew Rycroft, um, or one of his officials, they have a gentleman's agreement with France. They won't return people. Yeah. And Suella, and Suella, Suella Braben was told by her civil service, we can't send them back. To my mind, Rycroft should have been fired on the spot. Yeah. And any civil servant, um, you know, and if he just doesn't have the authority, primary legislation should be done in a day for, for that to be done. Three line whip, 80 majority, whatever it is. You know, we, we have the right to hire and fire anybody in the civil service. And anybody who was in the way should be fired on the spot. Over you go. And, 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 and I'm sorry, Macron. You know, I'm sorry. You know, it's, this might sound a little bit over the top, but if, we, if we're returning migrants back to France and they need a Royal, Royal Navy escort, so be it. You know, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, to my mind, what Macron is doing, you know, this, is a, this is a punishment beating for, 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 the, for, you know, for, for leaving the EU. And quite frankly, you know, Macron can learn, le learn how to behave like, like a civilised human being or he, or he needs to be taught. And you know, I'm sorry, you know, the, I think longer term, this is you know, there, there was a, there is there is an existentialist um, threat to this country from terrorism and other social ills, uh, which you know, five years time we'll, we'll be bitterly regretting what we did, and this needs to be addressed immediately and with robust matters. And, and quite frankly, the whole you know the whole if the whole of the Home Office needs to be fired, and we've got to start from the, from the beginning again. So be it. It has to be done. And you know, we, if, if we've got if we've got to, got to find volunteers to to to, to, to man the, the border force boats, and also as well, one of the first things I would do if I was Home Secretary, the Royal, Royal National, the RNLI, the Royal National Life, Lifeboat Institute, have um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, if 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 due to their action somebody dies, um, they can't be accused of corporate manslaughter. They have no legal legal immunity yeah, yeah. from what they do. Uh, and the first thing I would do, first thing I would do is I take that legal immunity away. And so, if you do make it, do do, do make do make a mess of things, you're going to jail for corporate yeah. manslaughter. Uh, that would stop the RNL, RNL, RNLI boats, you know, in a split second. And also, you know, these are practical short-term solutions. And say, look, you know, you know, the people in the border force, you're staying in port. You know, I'm sorry. You know, you go go out to France. You, you know, you go to the camps. You hand out leaflets saying we're not going to pick you up anymore. And that's the end of the, that's the end of the thing, and you know, and I'm sorry, you know, Bacharel doesn't like that. Too bad, mate. Well, let's end just on a picture which kind of connects with the RNLI. Although I don't think uh, Macron can behave like a grown up. I think that's impossible. But yeah. um, I don't, I'll let you keep your fingers crossed, David. Um, uh, this this was a lovely, a lovely poster. Eighty years ago, we stopped an entire German army crossing the English Channel. No, we can't stop an effing dinghy. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> that is through the RNLI, which have become basically. Uh, um, do you want to for our non UK? Viewers for US viewers, do you want to just let them know what the RNLI is and what it's become? Right, yeah. The Royal, Royal National Lifeboat Institute is a civilian um, uh, fleet of boats, which is entirely paid out of out of chari charitable organisations, yeah. and it's and, 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 the, and the people are volunteers, you know. Um, but but the chief executive earns one hundred eighty thousand pounds a year, well, whilst the people who risk their lives on on the sea barely get their expenses covered. Yeah. And they have to give up work, and if they're self-employed, that they, they lose money. And if they get a get, get, get a nine 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 called equivalent of nine one one call, um, they're expected to drop drop what they're doing, jump in the boats, and, and, and rescue rescue the pe rescue the people uh, concerned. And in fact, there was actually one guy. <laughs> as I was reading, there was one guy who was getting married, and he got he got a bleep. But this is this is about to put the ring on a finger. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, to go, you know. So um, you know what. I believe also there are quite quite a few RNLI people who actually resigned in protest um, over um, over being sent out to pick up migrants in the, in the middle of the sea. It might be as high as ten percent, but um, you know it, it, it is. Um, but this is the whole point: is you know, like 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 in America, we have this woke culture, the ESG yeah. woke type culture, whereby. Um, of, of, Professor um, Matthew Goodwin reckons about sixteen percent of the population. They're the, the sort of the, the degree educated people, you know, the, the bon passant thinking people. 
you know, and uh, you know who who believe who believe in in ultra liberal policies. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and there's nothing at the moment us plebs can do about it, despite the fact that eighty five percent of people oppose it. In Britain, about something like sixty seventy percent of people are opposed to 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 immigration still at the numbers and what have we. You know, the vast majority of people don't mind genuine refugees. Um, you know, um, free and peers. We don't mind that. Like Ukrainians is a good, good example. You know, they, are, they are genuine refugees. Um, but uh, that we really do object to all the free, uh, free uh, all the people who are coming over here, freeloading economic migrants. Oh, by the way, let me quote. I don't, know, I don't, know, I don't think I mentioned it, but um, in in Sweden, a research company interviewed um, interviewed uh, uh, refugees who have been given asylum in Sweden, and mm. um, uh, and because they were fleeing persecution, oppression, and wars, and what have you. They've asked the question, have you returned home at all? 79% had returned home, gone, gone back to the home country on vacation. 79%. <laughs> you know, if, if that's not the biggest sign that the, you know, the, the, go, the government of mugs, uh, aided and abetted by, 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 by the liberal and woke classes, and, and these people are pathological, pathological liars. Hmm. I've just got, you know, and chances and, and what have we. I, 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 you know, you have to be, you have to be stupid, naive, or, or a complete idiot. Yeah. Well, on that, I think we'll finish up. Uh, oh, oh, before, before, before we go, Peter, can I just, can I just quote to you very briefly? Yep. Well, I've, I've, I managed to find it as we, as we've been talking. Um, uh, here we are. Yeah. Uh, I'll just quote, quote you the attitudes that some Muslims have in this country. Uh, um, uh, in 2018, um, seven men uh, which sorry, seven men which over raping and, and pimping out girls from the ages of 11 to 15. Dr. Taj Hage, uh, the Imam of Oxford Islamic Congregation, said it was quotes bound up with religion and race, adding quotes in mosques around the country. A different doctrine is 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 teached. One that denigrates all women but treats whites with particular contempt. Men are taught that women are second class citizens little more than chattels or possessions over whom they have absolute authority. End of quote. Quote, their dress code from mini skirts to sleeveless tops is deemed to reflect their impure and immoral outlook. According to this mentality, these white women deserve to be punished for their behaviour by being exploited and degraded. End of quote. Well, that's, uh, um, I've seen some things that Tariq has, has put out and he does seem to be trying to highlight some of that but it's um it's wonderful well it isn't wonderful but it's it's good when you hear the community discussing the problem and hopefully others will wake up to yeah. that eye opening yeah, yeah. Mm. well That's eye -opening. david it's been good to meet you uh, at long last uh, <laughs> our interview happens regularly yeah. but thanks for coming on and i know that no, if people are not following you they certainly can do at david arthur 20 go and uh, follow david on twitter and you'll hear his um, regular bouts of wisdom 